Hey there, how are you? It's uh, Sunday afternoon. There's Arthur, and uh, I just finished playing music in the church for the last time for a while because, uh, as you know, if you've been following my adventures, I am, fingers crossed, getting back on the road at the end of this week. And I thought, uh, before I leave, I've never walked down this road that I've been parked at the edge of for a couple of months now. And I thought I would take a stroll down it. I think it's going to lead to the beach eventually. And just talk about some of the things I'm looking forward to uh, as I get back out on the road. It's uh, this, this road, I should mention. You probably saw it in the shop before, but we've had a lot of rain. So uh, it's pretty puddle covered and I'm wearing Crocs, um, which I'm usually wearing. But uh, I just I have to keep a little <laughs> awareness around me. So I, I don't get more of a bath than I bargained for. See, now here, in, before I get to the talking bit, there's a whole open lot right here. I don't know if there used to be a house there and there just isn't now. And then there are some houses that are still here. I think this is a dead end, this road, though I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, yeah, at the end of the week, um, uh, assuming everything goes well at the garage on Monday, which uh, as I'm recording this is tomorrow, at the end of the week I should be heading out of Vermont and initially heading to Washington DC. My uh, older son goes to American University in Washington and uh, I'm gonna go visit him and then head up to uh, Pennsylvania visit my younger son and so those are the first two big things that I'm looking forward to as I get back out on the road um, I haven't seen my older son oh there's a little path here let's go down that I haven't seen my older son in months um, since before he went away to college uh, in August and I definitely am really missing him and I've seen my younger son more recently, uh, but it's still been a while. It's getting pretty windy, so who knows, maybe uh, this recording will have some issues with it. Um, I don't have a special microphone or a wind cover, this is just the phone's microphone. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to visiting my kids. The other night I went over to uh, one of the church members' homes for dinner. And at the end of dinner, she gave me a hug. And I realized that the last time anybody gave me a hug was the last time I was at her house for dinner, which was weeks before. Here's the lake, Caspian Lake in all its glory. It's really beautiful. It's a gray, overcast, cold day today, but uh, the lake is still beautiful. But anyway, so uh, she's the only person I've hugged in recent memory. And before that, the last time anybody gave me a hug was, uh, I guess, when I went down to visit John, my son. And um, I've also visited my cousins fairly recently. And on my birthday, I saw my sister. So I hugged all those people. But it had probably been a month. And uh, that's not great, <laughs> to be totally honest. So as I travel, uh, I'm looking forward to encountering more people I can hug because uh, I just feel really touch starved. I mean, there's a part of that that, you know, goes along with not being in a relationship anymore and um, going from having kind of constant physical contact to none at all. But uh, that's not a great, great situation for me to be in or for any human to be in, really. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing more people who I can give hugs to. Also, it's getting cold here in Vermont, although it has been unseasonably warm uh, a lot recently. I mean, it, I, it was in the 70s a couple nights ago when I was up in Newport and I was hanging out 
on a pier in shorts and a t-shirt at eight o'clock at night, <laughs> which in the you know mid-October is not what should be happening in Vermont. And obviously that's not happening for good reasons, but uh, in any case, uh, it is generally speaking getting colder and it's gonna get a lot colder. In fact, somebody told me this morning when I was sitting in the church waiting to play that we're supposed to get snow this week. No, thank you. No, thank you. So, definitely looking forward to heading out. Just take a little spin. You can see there's some houses around here. And then, I don't know what this is. Is that, is that private property or? Let's go find out. Let's, let's Woody Guthrie it. Sign said no trespass and on the other side it didn't say nothing. That's what I'm referring to. So yeah, so going to some warmer places, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that when I get back on the road. Uh, my, I think that after Christmas, I'm going to go out to Arizona and, uh, oh, look at this. A little bottle sculpture. That's cool. And then, oh, this, maybe this belongs to this house. There's a house back there. And then looks like they have a little pier and such. I don't know how you get to this house if you're in a car. There must be, there must be a, another section of road back there or something. So yeah, anyway, my hope is, uh, well, not my hope, but I think that I'll go out to the Southwest and visit my Aunt Linda and my uncle Rich and my cousin Todd um, after Christmas time. Until Christmas time, I'm still gonna be on the East Coast and a lot of it will be in the Northeast. So definitely gonna be some cold weather coming up. Um, house sitting for some cousins in Albany in November. And then I'm house sitting for friends very close to where I am right now, the friends that I came up to visit initially and stayed in Vermont afterwards. I'm house sitting for them in December. So. Uh, definitely will be hanging out in the Northeast, and then of course I'll be spending Christmas with my kids. Oh, look at this cool joint right here. So I guess maybe these are summer cabins. So there definitely must be some other road because you're not you're not driving your car <laughs> back here. I'm glad I came back here. Uh, so yeah, maybe the Southwest for the winter. Um, there's a, a buddy of mine, uh, Darren, who. I met when I was out in the Southwest and he lives in a van too. And uh, he told me about a group called like Buddhist boondockers, I think something like that. Boondocking Buddhists, you know, something like that. Um, and they're having some stuff out in the Southwest. Uh, some, some gatherings of Buddhists who live in various kinds of vehicles. And then there's also the folks from, um, cheap RV living, Homes on Wheels Alliance, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, that whole gang, they're having some caravans um, out in the Southwest as well. So in the first part of my van life, I really didn't meet too many other van lifers. Um, partly that was because I spent a lot of time in the East where there aren't that many, but uh, partly also because I wasn't really, wasn't feeling that much like a part of that community. But I think I might like to. I think I might like to try to meet some more people, and uh, see if being part of the van life community, you know, just feels a little more natural. Um, I also I have a tendency to isolate myself, and that's a good thing to not do. <laughs> so, see now, like here, here there's a road, so maybe this end of the road goes out there to some other larger road. I really don't know. Um, and I, my guess is that there's nobody in these homes now, that these are summer homes for summer people and that, uh, they're not around right now. That's my guess. Not hundred percent sure. I mean, that is a big part of this area. Um, here in Greensboro is summer, summer people. So yeah, seeing my kids, hugging more people, going somewhere warm, and then uh, just seeing some places I haven't been. I'm excited to do that. Uh, that was a big part of the first travel-heavy phase of van life. 
um, where I saw a lot of places that I'd never seen before. Uh, I think it would be fair to say too rapidly. <laughs> but um, yeah, looking forward very much to to seeing more new places. Next summer, I was thinking about maybe taking a, uh, a trip across the top of the U.S. because I've never, I'll, I never made it to Washington State when I was doing the Pacific Coast um, this past winter. I didn't make it that far. And so I still want to see that. I've never seen Seattle. I'd like to see Seattle. And then I've never been to Idaho or Wyoming or Montana, um, the northern part of Colorado. I've been to the southern part. So there's a lot of a lot of space through there to travel and see the Dakotas. Um, I really want to see Butte, Montana, because I listened to some podcasts about its history that made it sound pretty fascinating. So yeah, I, I definitely want to see that part of the country. However, all of that, and and this is really okay, all of that is... It's just like on this vague list of stuff to maybe do. Because I don't really know what's going to happen. A, a big part of my success or failure moving forward is going to be figuring out the financial end of things. Um, you know, I need about $1,000 a month to live. And for a little while after I leave Vermont, I'm still going to be doing my church job remotely. But that's going to end at some point when they find a replacement. And so beyond that, the income I have is my Patreon and um, a tiny bit of freelance work because most of my freelance work dried up because of the pandemic. Don't know where this goes. This one is called Lazy Lane, which is right up my alley. Some cool birds around too. So yeah, I'm going to be figuring out the money thing, um, probably looking for some kind of remote job. But, I mean, there seem to be a couple ways that van lifers put together the money side of things. Um, so there's the people who start van life and they already have a job that they can do remotely. There's the retired folks who have, you know, their retirement income or their social security or whatever it might be. And then uh, folks who decide to live this life don't have a job that can transfer over and so they either find remote work uh, or they work seasonal jobs seems to be pretty common too and I really don't I haven't I haven't had to do that yet because the first part of my travel I was receiving the federal unemployment benefits and that was enough to keep me going and then since I got to Vermont um, I've been living in the van, but having a part-time job, you know, in a physical location. And that's been enough to keep me going. So at some point soon, I'm going to have to figure out how to keep myself going, uh, you know, without those two things. And that's okay, because I, I'm sure I'll be able to do it. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's all right. Uh, there are certainly are enough seasonal things that you can do uh, in various places, like, you know, working on various kinds of harvests or being a campground host or, you know, there's just, there's lots of things. I don't think I'm going to be, uh, like heading to Alaska to work on the boats or anything because I don't think, I don't think I'm the perfect candidate for that, but, uh, but there's enough stuff you can do. And then I haven't really started looking for remote jobs yet, but I feel like, um, I feel like there's given the amount of money I need and therefore the, you know, relatively minimal amount of money I need to make, and the relatively minimal number of hours I would need to work to make that money, I feel like it's not going to be that hard to figure that piece of the equation out. My Crocs are kind of old, and, uh, you know, Crocs aren't famous for their tread anyway, but my Crocs are basically like slippery surfaces, and so much of this road is kind of mud and puddles <laughs> that I'm trying to be cool about it, but I keep slipping while I'm walking and uh, trying not to not to let on so anyway this is uh this has probably gone on long enough I'm uh I'm heading back the way I came back toward my van uh but I just wanted to check in and take you on a little stroll and take myself on a little stroll and take a look toward the future which I'm excited about I hope to see many of you when I'm out and about and uh 
I'm, I'm really excited to get back on the road. I was happy to have this break here in Vermont, but uh, I'm, I'm equally happy to resume the, the moving portion of van life. As, uh, as my friend who lives up here said, you know, if, if my house rolled, I'd be taking it places too. <laughs> and uh, that does seem like, uh, like a pretty sound way to think about it. So anyway, I hope, uh, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for watching this and it's been, uh, it's been fun to take a stroll with you.